Welcome to EMS Office Hours. This is your Monday Minutes. And uh, as promised, we're going to continue with the EMS Quick Study tips here. This is episode number 18. Uh, still kind of floating around in, in AMP. and p And of course, we always ask the question, why is this important? Well, as always, I like to say it's important because it gives you key elements of what you're going to see on your EMS exams, uh, maybe a state exam, a regional exam, or even a national exam. These are key things that you're going to find on questions or within answers or within scenarios. And it's important to know this because it's going to help you, of course, pass the exam with confidence. You're not going to be giving away easy questions, easy five points or two and a half points or whatever. It's also important because this is the type of stuff that's going to help you when you're thinking about what's going on with your patient. It's going to help you when you do your documentation and it's going to help you when you interact with other healthcare professionals, including nurses and doctors. So today we're going to talk about respiratory acidosis and alkalosis. And it's going to be a quick overview, okay? I'm just going to kind of go through just some of the quick little elements here. But these are things that I am going to pretty much guarantee you will see this on your EMS exams. All right, so let's get into acidosis first. And this is when the patient is breathing too slowly and they're, ha and they're retaining too much uh, CO2, okay? And ends up having too much carbonic acid and that, of course, is going to lower their pH. So too much CO2, breathing too slowly, lowers the pH. Okay, try to remember key elements like that. All right, breathing too slow, too much CO2, lowers the pH. Because this is the stuff you're going to see on the exams. All right, it's gonna, the question is going to be presented to you of a patient who is you know, uh, breathing uh, is is breathing too is breathing at you know a slow rate to give you a number, um, and what's happening, right? It might ask you, is it they're having too much oxygen? They have too much um, uh, CO two. They have they have too little CO two. They have too much carbonic acid, right? And I ask you something like that. Okay, or it might give you all these two. A patient is breathing too slowly and retaining. Uh, CO2 would have, uh, what, low pH, no change in pH, a higher pH, things like that, right? Or it might ask you what it is. And, of course, it's respiratory acidosis, okay? So what are the things that cause it? Well, we just said breathing too slowly, right? Hypoventilation, shallow respirations, right? They're not getting enough, all right, air in. They're not getting enough oxygen in, okay? Um, and... Patient might be uh, become disorientated and might even be in sort of a, of a confusion, sort of stupor type reaction, right? So think of causes and treatments as to why patients might be breathing too slow, right? What might be causing them to be having shallow respirations or be disorientated, right? To cause this respiratory acidosis, right? Because you might get scenarios, all right, that talk about Patients that are hypoventilating, who are confused, whose respirations are shallow, all right? So think about the treatments and, and the causes of that and keep it in the back of your mind that these patients are acidotic, okay? At least at least on the respiratory end of it, all right? So I'm not going to go over all different causes and treatments because it could be definitely dependent on protocols and all that good stuff. So we'll kind of keep the basics here, but again... You're looking at patients that are breathing too slow, they retain too much CO2, and that's going to lower their pH, okay? So either, these are your signs and symptoms. Like I said, hypoventilation, shallow respiration, disorientation, and stupor. Those are going to be your signs and symptoms. And think of those causes, all right? Think of the causes of these signs and symptoms. It could be, you know, someone who, uh, you know, maybe some sort of respiratory issue they have going on, okay? So think of causes and treatments because you'll see stuff in, in a scenario that should lead you along the path where somewhere within that scenario, somewhere within the questions and answers that might come up with asking you, is the patient acidotic or not, Okay.
All right, respiratory alkalosis, sort of the opposite, right? It's not enough CO2. They're not getting enough of it. And they're breathing too fast. So they're getting a lot of oxygen and not enough CO2. All right, they're blowing too much of that off. And that's going to raise their pH. Their pH will be high. Um, and again, these are things that you're going to see on a test, guys. You'll, it'll, it'll be worded similar to what you're seeing here. Pages are breathing too quickly. They're retaining uh, too much uh, CO2. Or they might tell you that the breathing is too high. They're retaining, they, they're, they have too much oxygen and not enough CO2, right? What is their pH going to be? High, low, no change. And in the end, they're gonna, they might give you this and then say, okay, a patient that, that's breathing too high and is too, and retaining too much uh, CO2 and has a high pH would be respiratory alkalosis, respiratory acidosis, metabolic al alkalosis, metabolic acidosis. Which one of those four is that patient going to be in? You will see questions like that, guaranteed, all right? So keep that in mind. This is the stuff you're going to want to remember, all right? Because you're going to see a question about acidosis and alkalosis, whether it's respiratory, metabolic, all right? You're going to see that stuff, okay? So what are the symptoms? These are the patients that are hyperventilating. They complain of numbness and tingling, especially in their hands, Right? They're going to be restless, they're going to be anxious, agitated, sometimes even hysterical, and eventually they're going to pass out. They'll be unresponsive. Okay, These are those patients that are, that are having a very, very stressful time. They're very anxious. They might even complain of chest pain. They might even get the, those carpal pedal spasms right? where their fingers are cramping up. Okay, These are the patients you're going to be looking at. All right, And again, you want to know signs and symptoms like this and you want to think about what's causing them to hyperventilate what's causing them to have this mental restlessness this agitation i do warn you that these patients while it might be a sort of a common call in ems to get the hysterical patient who's hyperventilating and their chest pain and that lot of stuff is sort of a symptom of their anxiety don't make that your initial rule out okay Think of things like having a genuine heart issue, having some sort of a, 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 a neurovascular issue, all right, um, or the, some, some other type of cardiovascular issue, okay? Don't just blow it off as, oh, they're having an anxiety attack. Think of the causes of these signs and symptoms, okay, and kind of focus on those first. Don't go straight to the patient is being just hysterical and they have to calm down, right? And again, these patients, they're breathing way too fast, they're hyperventilating, they're getting too much oxygen and not enough CO2, and that's going to raise their pH. Some systems let you let the patient use the paper bag, right, to, to get more of that CO2 in them. Some some systems say to you, put a non-rebreather on them, but don't put the, you know, fill it up with the, the, the uh, reservoir with oxygen, but then turn it off and let them breathe in for the paper bag technique that way, right? Depending upon where you work, what your guidelines are, what you're allowed to do, these things might help, okay? But again, you want to think about the signs and symptoms, the causes, and the treatments. Don't jump right to that anxiety, okay? That could come back to bite you. But just for testing purposes, all right, and things you're going to want to remember, respiratory alkalosis, you will see this on a test because the hyperventilating anxiety patient is very, very common in EMS. So you want to be able to recognize this, and they're going to ask you, is it respiratory alkalosis? Is it acidosis? Is it metabolic? Is it, okay, acidosis, metabolic, alkalosis? This is going to, you'll see questions like that. You will see it. And if you don't see it on a national exam or on a state exam, let me know that they're getting rid of that question because I can stop doing this type of, of PowerPoint presentation. Okay, but I'm telling you, you will see some variation of these types of questions that focus specifically on respiratory alkalosis and acidosis 
more often than not, you're going to see something asking you about how to identify alkalosis more than the acidosis. The patients that are breathing too fast and that have too low CO2, and they're going to want to know some of the signs and symptoms that's causing it. All right, that's it uh, for today. I don't want to get into metabolic this week. Okay, I'm going to kind of end it there. And that's what we're going to be doing next time. We're going to talk about metabolic acidosis and metabolic alkalosis. So I hope you can use these Monday Minutes, guys. I know it's very basic, but as always, these are key elements that's, that are going to help you identify what's going on with your patient, document it more appropriately, think about what's happening with your patient, and also key elements that you will see on your EMS exams, okay? Um, so if you have some of your own, you want me to do a Monday Minutes on a specific topic, I would love to do that. Um, you know, send me an email. Let me know your thoughts or your ideas. My email, of course, is contact at emsofficehours.com. Um, real quick, I mention this pretty much every week, but there is an EMS quick study guide that I encourage you to go ahead and claim on the website. You can click the, the link here for details. That will take you to the site where you can claim your copy of this guide. This is a digital download, so you can download it have it on your computer forever, and this type of content is throughout the entire guide. These the, the entire guide, these quick, nice um, uh, key elements that you are going to really, really need when you're taking a test. It's going to be a guide you can use in many, many ways. And I think once you download it and you start looking at it, you'll realize how valuable it is and where you can implement it in your EMS studies and in your EMS career. Okay. All right, guys. That's it. As always, I am Jim Hoffman. This is your EMS Office Hours Monday Minutes. Stay safe.